Hello, I built a sound activated air cleaner controller that turns on this giant shop air cleaner whenever it hears a woodworking tool. What's that sound? Pretty amazing functionality, but the important thing to remember is it's only cool because it has LEDs. Longtime viewers of this channel are probably saying to yourself, hey, you've already built one of these. Uh, he's already got one, you see? And that's true, but the original one had some problems, so I built this one to improve on it. This is the Fanboy, our wood shop's air cleaner. It has two 20-inch air filters up front, an 1100 cubic foot per minute motor in the back, and this really cool thing that looks like a jet engine that doesn't do anything but redirect the air. It's really powerful! Our first sound activated fan controller works pretty good. It does indeed turn the fan on when there's tool noise out here. The problem is, is that it turns the fan on when there's door slams in the driveway, or lawn equipment wanders by, or we drop something in here and it makes a bang the fan comes on. So I'm going to build a better controller for this fantastic air cleaner. Hey, it's me from the future to give you a quick overview of this new controller. The biggest difference with this new one from the old one is that this one listens for sound and duration. So you have to make some sound for a period of time before it triggers, which is an improvement over the last one. Plus it looks better. The new Fanboy controller has power input, a 15 amp fuse to protect everything, power output to the Fanboy, a decibel reader, which is really a voltage meter, I'll discuss that later, a light sensor that turns off the sound sensor when there's no light, a microphone to test for shop noise, a timer, and a large LED display that goes back and forth to tell us when the thing is on. Over here are manual controls. I can turn the fan on by pushing this button. I can turn everything off by pushing this button, and I can set it up for film mode if I push this. At full power, the fanboy is pretty loud, and that's a problem when filming. So when I'm shooting a YouTube video, I can push this yellow film button. That cuts power to the fanboy, so the fan stops, but the Arduino still has all of the sound data, all of the timing data, all the environmental data that it's keeping. That way, I can have a quiet shop to record, and then I can restart it when I'm finished by pushing this button, pick up where I left off. You can tell that it's in this mode by this multicolor flashing LED. So in the future, when you're watching our videos and you see this little LED flashing, know that we hit that button so we could talk to you. Then restart it when we're done. I'll start by tearing down the old controller and salvaging any parts we can use. Then I'll replace the original wooden box with a properly grounded metal box to house all the electronics and relay. You know, and not have a fire hazard with wood. One of the problems with the prototype fan controller is that it was tough to see the readout in the shop. The LCD display is really great, but it's very small, and from a distance, you might as well not have anything there at all than a green light. So I decided to use something called a Larson scanner. You've seen these before on Cylons and Knight Rider and other things like that. It's named after Glenn Larson, who was the producer of a lot of these shows. The Larson scanner doesn't scan anything. It just looks like a scanner, and it's really cool, and it's something I can see from across the shop. Now, I could have built a Larson scanner with an Arduino. It's been done before, and I have the ability to do that, but my Arduino is already being used for other functions for this fan controller, and I wanted to get something that was a little cooler than what I could make. So I bought this. It has nine large 10 millimeter LEDs in multiple modes of scanning back and forth. It's from a company called Evil Mad Scientist. Why would I not want this to be part of my scanner? So I got the kit and I put it together. And now I have my Evil Mad Scientist Larson scanner. The metal box is going to hold the Arduino, all the readouts, and all the other electronic components that are going to control the fanboy but the metal box is just a metal box. I need a structure in here to hold this stuff. So I'm going to use these PCB boards to mount the components to. But there's more components than will fit on a PCB board that will fit in here. So I have these standoffs that I'm going to be using to build different levels for the circuits to sit on so that I can pass wires underneath and everything else. It's like I'm building a circuitry skyscraper. Three hours later. I've got the light sensor, the microphone, the decibel readout, the time readout, the all-important Larson scanner, 
the relay that turns this on and off, and the Arduino, and the Arduino power supply all on this structure here. People may try to impress you by telling you they built things with Arduino and they've got everything put on a board, but really that's not terribly impressive. This looks cool, but really all I'm doing is scrapbooking with electronic parts. None of these parts are talking to each other yet. And now this structure fits down inside the box so that it's all one happy family. All we have to do now is wire it. And now it's all wired up and it's running. I've got it hooked into the laptop down here to give it power also so I can upload code and I'm out here in the field in the shop because I'm going to be testing the microphone. We have the millivolt output from the microphone. I could have done decibels but there's a lot of mathematical conversions and a lot of theological issues about converting voltage to decibels and I don't really care about that. I just care about does the energy level reach a certain point then run the fanboy. So we're using millivolts because it's easier and I'm lazy to I don't want to do all that stuff. The Larson scanner is working, the timer is working with hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. And here we go. Three things have to happen before the fanboy controller turns on the fanboy. The shop lights have to be on. There needs to be a loud noise. That noise needs to last more than a few seconds. The new fanboy controller incorporates a light sensor because if a loud sound happens, and the lights are off in the shop, well then it couldn't have been in the shop and it's somebody else's problem to deal with and the fanboy doesn't need to run. So to test it, I'm gonna turn this light switch off while my assistant over there activates the saw in complete darkness and we'll see if it starts. Nothing happened, the light sensor worked. Many, many minutes later. Now that the sensors and software are working properly, we can put everything in the box and make it look cool and hang it on the wall. Tested, completed, and fully operational. The Fanboy controller is here in its natural environment on the French cleat wall, keeping watch over the shop. And automatically making the Fanboy clean the shop air. This controller is much better behaved than its predecessor and does a great job controlling Fanboy air cleaning jobs. I can do work out here in the shop and leave, and this continues running for two, three hours to clean the air out here in the shop and get the dust out of the air while I'm not even out here. And it's totally hands-off, automatic, and everything works without me having to worry about paying attention to it. Just look at how much dust the fanboy removes from the air. This is the kind of automation I like to have in my wood shop. It just works while I do other things and build things. This thing manages air quality. I'm going to be adding some more automated air quality and shop tools out here in the future, but this is the most prominent one and it's the one I'm the most proud of. Very odd, very cool. But that's it for today. More projects are coming because now I got an air cleaner that works. Stuff's gonna get built out here. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Comment down below. 
I'll see you next time.